<laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is David Narkowitz. I'm the mayor of the city of Northampton, and it's uh, an honor to be here. Welcome you all to uh, to the Northampton uh, side of the Norwatic Rail Trail for this today's exciting announcement. Um, before I turn it over to, to the secretary, I just want to uh, obviously thank him, thank the Patrick administration, um, and also thank that guy that's wandering onto the bridge, uh, <laughs> my former boss, uh, Congressman Olver, who uh, who we all owe a debt of thanks uh, for the original trail, and now this, uh, and now this, uh, this uh, he's checking the measurements. Uh, uh, so, uh, and we want to thank him obviously for his leadership uh, in in making part of why we're here today possible. So, I'm going to turn it over now to the Secretary of for Energy and the Environment, uh, Rick Sullivan, who's obviously no stranger to Western Mass former mayor, knows how much a mayor loves to come to these events. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Mayor. And I think it is, uh, it's appropriate that we started with the mayor, not only to welcome us to his city, but also understanding how important uh, this project is particular, but really the recreational assets uh, in the city of Northampton and across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts really are to our individual cities and towns and the quality of life uh, in those cities and towns. This is a great recreational opportunity here to get people outside uh, walking and biking uh, in the community, but it's also a bit of an economic engine uh, in the community. So people shouldn't just think of our state park system, the 450,000 uh, acres that we have uh, in the state park system in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the ninth largest in the country. So if you think about little old Massachusetts and we have the ninth largest state park system, it really says something about where our priorities are as a commonwealth, getting people outside, appreciating our environment, and the economic opportunity uh, that they bring. Particularly uh, in this day and age and the economies that we still have, when the families of the commonwealth of Massachusetts and the surrounding states are looking for inexpensive ways uh, to have quality family time, enjoy their vacations, they can do it right here in Massachusetts at our great state park system. And this today is celebration of a great partnership. We have uh, Congressman uh, Olver, Congressman McGovern, who are here with an earmark that Congressman uh, Olver was able to get uh, back in the time, uh, back in his uh, tenure, uh, matched with our great friends at DOT with the 20% match that needed, uh, and working cooperatively with DCR to uh, do the design and the reconstruction here at the Norwatic, a $3.2 million investment right here on the Norwatic Trail, representing uh, work that'll be done to widen the trail, protect the wetlands, redeck the four bridges that are involved, improving the parking areas, realigning the trail with the Route 9 tunnel, adding accessibility improvements, and overall just enhancing the safe road crossing and adding some additional amenities uh, here at the Norwatic Trail. I would like to turn this over uh, to the congressional delegation that has represented Massachusetts and Northampton and the other communities uh, so well over so long a period of time. Uh, first up is your congressman uh, right now who is uh, carrying on the great work and the legacy that uh, John Olver brought specifically to Northampton uh, and Amherst in this region, your congressman, Jim McGovern. Well, thank you very much, and I want to uh, thank Secretary Sullivan for his introduction and for all the great work that he and his team do. Uh, I want to thank Commissioner Murray. Uh, I'm glad to be here with my colleagues in government, John Seibach and Peter Cocott, both uh, very much involved in, in this vision. Um, I'm happy to be here with Mayor Narkowitz, uh, and um, I'm also uh, happy to be here with Tom Mitchell with Senator Rosenberg's office. Uh, but I'm especially happy to be here with John Olver, who I think is one of the greatest members of Congress that ever served in Congress, who has done so much to support uh, projects like this that are that, that make uh, our communities more livable. Look, this project got underway long before I came into the picture, so I can't take any credit for it, other than the fact that I supported the Safe T. Lou bill in which this earmark was in. Uh, but I want to thank uh, John Olver for all of his efforts in securing the funding to reconstruct the Nawatic uh, Rail Trail. And for what I've heard, it's been a long time in coming. Um, I also want to recognize the cooperative efforts of DCR and MassDOT in making this, reconstru this uh, reconstruction possible. 
You know, all too often federal and state agencies work in separate silos uh, instead of working together for the public good. DCR and Mass DOT broke down those silos so that we could be here today. And, um, and I want to just say one thing. There are some people, uh, including some in the press, who have a tendency to uh, diminish the importance of earmarks or to, uh, or to somehow belittle them by calling them pork. Um, I don't think this is pork. I think this is nourishment. Um, and these are the kind of investments that need to be made um, all over the country, quite frankly. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank the members of the, 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 Newark, the Newark Rail Trail Advisory Committee for their relentless advocacy on behalf of this project. You know, um, being from Worcester, um, we never went west very much. Um, and because of my new wonderful congressional district, I'm learning all about points west of Worcester. And I have to tell you that some of the most beautiful parts of the Commonwealth, in fact, some of the most beautiful parts of the country are here. Uh, and what a pleasure it is to be able to represent this area. Um, you know, the Nawadic Trail is one of those beautiful places. It not only provides a venue for recreational activity, but, it's, but it also acts as a commuter path between Northampton, Hadley, and Amherst. Now, there are uh, uh, some in Washington who don't believe this, uh, but climate change is a real thing. Uh, and obesity in America is all too real. Uh, the federal government needs to do more to support alternative forms of transportation in order to get people out of their cars, both for the good of their bodies and for the good of their environment. And I am hopeful that this path will one day connect with the Wachusett Greenway, Mr. Secretary, stretching across the second congressional district. Uh, please know that I'm here to support your efforts to make that happen. Thank you for having me here today. I look forward to biking this glass-free trail uh, with, with, my, um, with my family very, very soon. Uh, and uh, I, don't, uh, I won't be able to keep up with John Olver, but I'll try. But thank you very much, and this is a really, it's a wonderful day to celebrate. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. And you've been here early and often, and we know that the visits will continue. You are a great friend to Western Mass. But for the record, uh, the Central uh, Mass Rail Line will actually go all the way, ultimately, down and through Connecticut. Uh, through my hometown of Westfield, and we're working hard to effectuate the entire connection across the state, and that will happen. Uh, and it will happen because Governor Patrick uh, has been committed, uh, you will often hear him talk about investing in the infrastructure uh, as part of the economic engine in Massachusetts, and that includes our trail system. Um, so there have been capital dollars that have been put aside for investments like that. And in order to make that happen, you need to have great partners who understand the importance of that investment. And that means the legislative delegation that comes to Boston and supports the budgets and takes the hard votes on budgets and understand that when you take those votes, you also then have to pay for those investments. Uh, and we have two of the leaders here with us today uh, from the House of Representatives who have always been out front, understanding what's important in their community and the quality of life, but understanding that those investments need to happen and they need to happen across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which includes their districts as well. So it is my great privilege to introduce your representative, Peter Coca. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Do I have your permission to take off this suit? Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Feel a little warm. That's good. Thank you. Um, let me first of all say that we are so lucky to first of all have had such a great congressman and congressman over. Let's give them a hand. Hey. And we are now represented, represented by the great progressive voice in Congress who is doing so many great things, our current Congressman Jim McGovern. Let me just say something about Secretary Sullivan. When you look at the history of his agency over the last 20 years, I can think of no more proactive secretary in protecting our environment than Rick Sullivan. So let's give him a big hand, too. I'll be brief. This land is your land, this land is my land. That's a great lyric from a great song, but it's true because we have spent so many millions of dollars, tens and hundreds of millions of dollars, protecting open space, cleaning up this river, and a great challenge has been providing public access to those resources that taxpayers paid for. This is a great access point. By improving this bike path, you're going to be able to bike someday from East Stampton to Amherst, someday to Hatfield, 
and you're going to be able to go through all those public lands that your tax dollars have protected. So this is your land, please use it. At this point, I'd like to, to introduce my colleague, uh, who's doing great work in Boston, John Seibeck. Yeah, I know there's many people who thought this day would never come. Uh, and, and there are rumors that there are people who are collecting glass as, as, as mementos. Um, but, I, but I think I want to focus on one thing that Congressman McGovern said, and, and that is that it's not just recreation, that it truly is an economic engine. And the number of people who are using this trail to commute is absolutely astonishing. And, and, and helping to alleviate some of, the, some of the traffic that we're seeing along Route 9 and along the way. So, so it was a vision. It was a vision that John Olver had a number of years ago <clears throat> that people didn't believe would actually happen. It happened. We tried an experiment. The experiment didn't really work the way we wanted to. Uh, and so beginning with this, these improvements, this trail will change from being one form of a shining star to another form. You may not see the glass, but with the improvements, I expect you'll see far more people utilizing. You'll be seeing families. It'll be there for recreational purposes. It'll be there for improving their health. It'll be there for commuting purposes. And, and, and I think what will happen is people will recognize that we truly have a gem here in the Valley. And it could not have happened w without the leadership of, uh, of Congressman Olver, without DCR. Uh, and, and, and it truly is kind of a unique partnership to see DCR and DOT working together uh, on this, I, I hope this is the uh, this is the foundation of, of other relationships, and recognize that recreation and transportation do go hand in hand. And I appreciate your efforts, Secretary, uh, and the efforts of, of DOT in terms of going forward. This truly will be something to be proud of, and, and I thank you all for being here this morning. Thank you. At this point, I think our next speaker truly needs no uh, introduction as all the speakers prior have uh, acknowledged his work. But I do want to tell one story, which I think when John was pacing off the uh, front of the bridge is indicative of uh, his tenure as a congressman and a, as a uh, representative in, in the state legislature as well, is that's the uh, attention to detail. So as someone who was the mayor in his uh, congressional district and then the commissioner and now the secretary, you would tend to get these 11 o'clock at night phone calls from John asking these little idiosyncrasy questions about an individual project that quite frankly, you had to go get the, uh, the staff that knows the projects much better to be able to answer. But that tells you uh, how close attention John overpaid to the district and how important these projects were to the district and therefore to him. Uh, and we stand here today because of the earmark that Congressman Over was able to get and his continued support over the number of years on this and so many other projects. So it is my honor to introduce Congressman John Over. Hey. Thank you very much, Rick. You know, I um, uh, I just had to step off that bridge there because uh, I, I actually had never had done that. I've been across it, but I never had bothered to figure out exactly what it was. And I have a foot, which is almost exactly a foot, uh, a foot long. And so, to me, ten steps there, it showed me that that is a ten-foot bridge. For those of you who have been involved with the advisory committee and such, you will know that that ten-foot issue uh, uh, was one of the major issues that has kept us so long in this process. But. I do not wish, wish the, the sun's coming out, and I do not wish to contest this, the, uh, 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 this spot with the sun, so I'm going to be un, uh, uncharacteristically short <laughs> in, in uh, my comments, because actually most everything needed has, to be, has already been, uh, been said. But uh, I'm, I mainly want to commend commend the uh, secretary that we have here, Rick Sullivan, former mayor of Westfield. He has already pointed out that, uh, that we're going to finish this job to the Connecticut line. So there's really only two small steps between, between where we've gotten at the Southampton town line to where the, um, uh, the path is completed in, in Southwick and part of uh, and under construction, at least in 
uh, in uh, the southern part of uh, Westfield. So uh, I'm not sure. I've always thought as things were going on here that I might never live to see the day that this project got actually off the ground. But I think I might actually live uh, to see the day when the pro project is completed all the way to the Connecticut, Connecticut line. But Secretary Sullivan and uh, Secretary Davey, as the head people under the governor, for this is the support and cooperation that they have given, the persistence and the patience that has gone on. I particularly have to commend Al Stegeman, who couldn't be here today, but Rich Massey is the, uh, the primary, the higher ranking official, I guess it is, in, the, uh, in District 1 related to transportation. But the persistence and the patience that DCR and its people uh, applied to this project through these several years of, uh, of uh, uh, reaching out to the egos of, of people on the advisory committee in the towns and a lot of other people in, in, uh, that were coming forward in Amherst and Hadley and uh, Northampton. It was a real job for them. And I have to also thank uh, Paul Janagy for, for having been the person who, who dealt with all of those egos, my own, my own also involved in it. I had some real thoughts about what ought to happen. So I am very pleased. I, I'm very pleased to be able to say that I, with uh, some luck, I will see this project uh, completed. And I uh, thank you all for being here. As you can see, I am a private citizen now. Thank you, Congressman. As uh, the Congressman alluded to, there's been a number of stakeholders and a number of user groups who, who really have come together in a volunteer way uh, to make this project uh, important. The Norwatic Rail Tra Trail Advisory Committee, the Appalachian Mountain Club, the Norwatic Rail Trail Construction uh, Listservs, uh, the general public, in representing all of those stakeholders, uh, I'd like to call forward Andy Morris Friedman, who's the vice chair of the Norwatic Rail Trail Advisory Committee, to, uh, to add his voice. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, compared to the former congressman, I'll be short. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, our chairman couldn't be here today, Rob Kunstler, but he sent me this letter via email, which I'd like to read to you and maybe make a few small interjections on my own. It is difficult to overstate the perseverance of all involved, from the former representative John Alber to his staff, especially Natalie. Where are you, Natalie? Okay. Uh, to the professionals from DCR, Paul and Doug, are you guys here? No, they're too busy working. Oh, Paul's here. Okay, great. With fond memories of Danny O'Brien and Alexandra Dawson, uh, two people who passed away while we were arguing about how the rail trail should be. Mass DOT, who stepped in and gave this project new life. Um, let's see. To, um, to PVPC, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Thanks, Jeff. Where are you? There he is. He's worked really hard on the trail. He and his daughters made this great map of the trail that we used during uh, uh, our committee uh, discussions. Uh, all the current and former members of the Neurotic Rail Trail Advisory Committee, that's a mouthful, who worked in various ways over all these years to bring this project to its starting point. This is really the beginning of the end. The doubters thought that this day might never come, but soon the surveyors would be laying out the design on the ground and later this summer, one by one, the various sections of the Norwatic Rail Trail will close as the contractors commence their work. If, for once, everything goes according to schedule, we will be celebrating the grand reopening of the new and improved Norwatic Rail Trail sometime late next year. In the meantime, many of you who are here will likely use and enjoy some of the other newly extended trails nearby, like right over the, uh, the road there. Together, these trails are the first routes and shoots of a growing neurotic rail trail network, which will someday stretch throughout the Connecticut River Valley, east to the ocean, and south to the Sound. As I like to say, someday we'll be able to go from Williamstown to Provincetown in our electric wheelchairs. Thanks for coming. Thank, thank you, Andy. 
I again would like to thank uh, Secretary Rich Davey, who's been a big proponent of this project, and all of the representatives from MassDOT that, uh, that are here today. We could not be doing this uh, without you. Um, just one reminder, as a former mayor, there are always three parts to every good public works project. There's when everybody's complaining that the work needs to be done. We're past that. We then will have all the complaints during the inconvenience of the actual construction, so we are about to enter that phase. We, don't, we do not have any sympathy for that complaint. And then there will undoubtedly be the complaints that after everybody does such a great job, everybody wants to be here and it's too crowded and there's no parking. So we are not sympathetic to that complaint either. Um, and I am very pleased uh, to, uh, to introduce our last speaker today uh, because this is actually uh, his first public appearance as the new commissioner of the Department of Conservation and Recreation, the new uh, chief steward of some 450,000 acres across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and the individual who, in fact, will be fielding those calls of complaints that it's too crowded. Um, my former uh, deputy commissioner, now the commissioner at DCR, Jack Murray. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I can't think of a better way uh, to inaugurate uh, my tenure here uh, than to be here with all of you um, at uh, this, uh, this uh, groundbreaking. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to uh, the DCR's Nawadic Trail. Um, you know, DCR has been charged uh, by Governor Patrick to enhance and improve the quality of life in Massachusetts in uh, very uh, special and important ways. And as part of this uh, charge, uh, DCR strives to develop areas like this trail uh, to improve our parks and recreational assets uh, across the Commonwealth. In fact, over the last 12 months, uh, DCR has opened uh, and revitalized uh, many trails similar to this. Uh, we work, for example, with our friends at the Appalachian uh, Mountain Club and with the National Park Service to complete the uh, New England National Scenic Trail, uh, which is a pretty amazing trail, which uh, traverses uh, almost 39 communities, uh, runs 220 miles long, uh, from Long Island Sound in Connecticut all the way to the New Hampshire border. And in Massachusetts, 65% of that trail uh, run through uh, DCR property. Also, uh, last year, we had the pleasure of helping to break ground on the Black, uh, Blackstone Greenway uh, in central Massachusetts. <coughs> in October, uh, DCR uh, also opened the $3.6 million uh, Elwife Greenway, uh, which runs through Somerville uh, and Medford and Arlington. And uh, we hope to begin work in the very near future on the Neponset Greenway in Boston uh, in collaboration again with our friends uh, from MassDOT. Uh, these projects are all very, very crucial uh, because they offer a wealth of access and opportunities. People can walk, they can bike, they can jog, they can commute. Uh, their value to our environment uh, and to enhancing uh, recreational uh, experiences cannot be overstated. Uh, this $3.2 million uh, trail project is important because it improves public safety, as the, uh, the Secretary uh, pointed out, uh, and it highlights the wonderful green spaces we have here in Massachusetts. Uh, we are truly uh, fortunate to have a wealth of open space here, and we are equally uh, fortunate to have uh, stakeholders here and partners uh, who also cherish and, and take care of this greenway and love it as much as we do. Uh, these parks really do provide uh, value in our everyday lives. Uh, and uh, cannot uh, be uh, measured uh, in any ordinary ways. Uh, providing access to our natural, cultural, recreational resources is uh, more important uh, than ever, and DCR is committed to uh, improving these spaces in these difficult times. I'd like to thank uh, Secretary Davey and our friends at MassDOT, our congressional delegations, uh, Congressman Olver, our friends uh, from the legislative uh, delegations, and uh, the municipal officials from Northampton and Amherst and Hadley as we prepare for this uh, construction, which is expected to uh, last a duration of about uh, 14 months. And uh, finally, I'd just uh, like to uh, thank the DCR team, many of them here assembled with you. Uh, their dedication to making uh, the communities better is uh, something that I have an opportunity uh, to see every day, and I'm continued, uh, continually impressed uh, with their uh, work ethic and uh, the care they take uh, in their parks every day. Special shout out uh, to Bob Clifton and Ashley Green here, who spend most of their day uh, maintaining uh, this, uh, this this railway. Um, Bill Hickey and Joe Rotundo uh, and Toggy from our external affairs staff. Um, Dom Sacco, Paul Chanagy here, uh, also Jen Soper and Jen Howard from our land staff. And I would also be remiss uh, if I didn't uh, also take a moment to remember our former colleague 
uh, and Rail Trail Coordinator Danny O'Brien, uh, who passed away just last year. Uh, Dan worked tirelessly and passionately on projects just like this uh, and uh, provided uh, much uh, needed access across the state for great recreational opportunities. Um, he served the Commonwealth uh, with distinction and commitment and uh, dedication. He was a great worker, a friend, uh, and he would have been uh, very, very proud to have been here today uh, at this ground uh, breaking and he has missed. So thank you all very much for coming. I uh, appreciate uh, you being here with us and uh, I'll get on with the ground breaking.